Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering creativity. I'm Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. Just a heads up, everyone, that my new book, Lessons in Gratitude, a memoir on race, the arts, and mental health, published by the University of Michigan Press, is now available on Amazon and everywhere books are sold. I encourage you to check it out. Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is David Stout, who serves as Professor of Composition Studies and Coordinator of the Initiative for Advanced Research in Technology and the Arts at the University of North Texas. David, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, it's so great to be able to talk to you. And that is a very long and involved title, which we will get to uh, in just a second. Uh, and obviously, UNT, UNT's College of Music is one of our wonderful creative partners, helped us to uh, co-create for this show. Um, and so I thought I would obviously love to you work, you know, at a very high level with AI uh, and the arts. And so I want to talk about that. Lots of people think different ways about it. Um, but first, I was just going to ask kind of what is what is kind of involved overall in the initiative for advanced research and technology in the arts what's kind of the scope of what you're working with there um it was originally uh set up as an interdisciplinary uh cluster that was not actually situated in any uh college i worked directly under the provost and with the office of research it is not a curriculum, though it's very popular with students, and I think they wish it was a curriculum. Um, it's, a, it's really a faculty research consortium or nexus is a, a meeting ground for people working in technology across the arts, but also including science and engineering, depending on um, interest. So it's been a bit uh, fluid because, well, people, uh, people come and go. Um, but there is a sort of a core membership of faculty, and then there's sort of a, another tier of sort of in, interested um, people. Um, and we, we do things like bring in uh, guests, uh, we work on, uh, we write grants together, um, and then uh, some of the members have individual studios or labs. So I have a, a studio called the Hybrid Arts Lab. Uh, acronym uh, uh, HAL for short. Um, and we do various kinds of things in, in that studio related to VR, immersive video, ele live electronic music and audiovisual performance installations, and um, also printmaking and various things with uh, at this point, we're very heavily involved in AI stuff. So um, all of the possible outputs for that, which includes still images, films, and music. So let's kind of get to that. Um, and first, I guess the, you know, there are, it seems like there's people on the spectrum of, we shouldn't be using AI to create music, or we should, and so on and so forth. So I'm curious, First, just kind of on the global kind of strategic approach to AI, do you have kind of an ethos uh, about that and about incorporating AI, AI into um, creativity? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess the first thing I would say is that, um, well, I've been around the the block. So I touched my first synthesizer in 1975 when I was a sophomore in college. Uh, and I wasn't planning on it. I, I was studying visual art. Um, I didn't really think I had permission really to be uh, working in, in music, but my life took a radical change at that, po uh, that point. And I moved into a completely different kind of, of work. So I've been working with sort of uh, generative systems, first in the analog realm, and then digital, right up until AI. So for me, 
AI isn't such a new thing. It, it's really an evolution of technologies that artists have already been working with. Um, so it gives me a slightly different perspective on it. But you're correct. We're in a we're in a kind of a tumultuous time. I guess it, it's a little bit akin to how I imagine it might have been to, to live during the days of the printing press first launched or the advent of photography. Now we have the advent of the, uh, you know, somewhat of the idea of the death of photography or of the of photographic truth. So it is a really, it is a disruptive technology. It's a powerful technology. Um, and I probably should make a, a, an important distinction that I'm working with generative AI in the arts. Uh, which is really different from this idea of, an, of an, uh, an artificial general intelligence that would be embedded everywhere. And um, that is not my area of focus or, or expertise. And that does sound a bit scary. But with any tool that's this powerful, it's going to be used for, it can be used for nefarious ends and for, you know, brilliantly positive ends. So um, that, that's just the nature of humanity yeah. so so with that, so with that said um um i i think that the the current climate is is that um a lot uh, especially many sort of the naysayers that are really very vocal about this um don't really understand or haven't really used the technology so there there are a lot of there's a lot of critique uh, about it in that it is a you know you just simply press a button or in this case speak to your computer with a handful of words and out, out pops instant art instant music and that is is true it's it, and it's you know it is kind of magical but it doesn't mean that that instant art or that instant music is any good or and it doesn't mean that it's necessarily connected to the vision of the person who wants to push it and the, the um, popular platforms that have been created really are a kind of entertainment. I mean, I imagine a similar thing when we first had recorded music, it was seen as another way for the general population to interact with music. And that obviously has been a, a disruptive, but also created a whole other um, industry and orientation. Um, and I think that this is a similar thing. I, I, um, I should probably say that I first started, I've only been working in the AI space for about three years. I have colleagues that, you know, that are researchers that have been involved in this for two decades or a, a decade at, at a really deep level. So I'm using the tools that are readily available to, to most um, everyone has com computation, you know, access to a phone or a computer. Right. Um, and so with, so with this, so which is just wonderful, I love how you kind of, you know, describe, you know, how it was this evolution for you. Um, so kind of a two part question. So kind of how are you using it? And also kind of, um, are there any, as you use it, are there any steps for someone, and there are many in our audience, who would be like, well, I'd like to start using it. Are there suggestions you have on do this and or do this? Don't just, you know, push a button and then expect great music to come out kind of thing. So curious, how are you using it? And any suggestions as kind of how someone who hasn't used it yet should kind of frame how they approach it and or key things they should keep in mind? Sure. So I began using uh, uh, AI to generate um, images, still, um, still images, and I took a pretty deep dive on that. And those programs were, uh, had been trained on, uh, as we know, and this is part of the contentious aspect of it, on um, all different kinds of, of artists from, from history, but also contemporary. So in that space, I... Uh, uh, when I'm using prompts and if I'm going to reference an artist, because many times I just reference like a, 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 uh, like a technique, like uh, a certain kind of oil painting or a certain kind of light or a certain kind of gesture, as I would if I were actually making something physically. Um, but if I do use uh, um, artist names, I don't use contemporary living artists because I do believe they should be compensated. So fast forward to the um, what followed, and you know, many times music is at the 
is at the leading edge of these things. But this time around, it was the visual arts first, and then music came just a wee bit afterwards. So um, I'm currently uh, writing songs using uh, a popular platform called Udio. And that just began as like an experiment. And then it was like instantly addictive uh, it, because it's it's quick. But the way these programs, at least this one works, is you do it in 30 second increments. So you're guiding, you have a prompt, it generates something. And usually I, I will go 20 iterations of generating a seed idea before I find one that connects with me. Um, um, and then I'll start to, to um, build it out. So it'll, uh, I might change the prompt a little bit um and start to build out a piece and that once again it's hit or miss i'm in the right terrain that i want to be in but it may, the transmission may sound wrong there may be something you know some choice the system has made that i don't care for so it really is you have to have a, a certain amount of patience even though this is so fast ultimately it's not for everybody because you sit there trial and error and piecing things together now, what is exciting to me about this is that these programs have, they obviously are a bit more focused on popular music and songwriting. So lyrics, so writing really, it's not just the prompt, it's the words that you write. And I used to write songs back in my 20s, but I haven't done that for some decades. Uh, and the exciting thing for me is I've been writing again. I was on a faculty le uh, development leave uh, in the spring and in the last six months, I've, I've written 35 songs, and um, that and the, I do not I do not use AI to write to do my writing for me. The writing it's really the musical response pulls the words out of me, and the words that come out of me influence the musical response. So it's like guiding. It's 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 a bit like guiding an improvisational ensemble, uh, but you're co-creating at the same time. So it really is a collaborative co-creative space. And um, so that's one way of working with it musically. Another way, uh, and I'm also doing this, is using it more like a generator of sample material, like bit, bits and pieces of phrases, sounds, um, et cetera, and you build up a library and then you piece the, these together afterwards. Now we haven't yet gotten to the place where it's spitting out um, sheet music music or MIDI, well, probably somebody's doing MIDI, but I think that where this goes is not just these specialized platforms. We're just going, we're going to see this technology. It's already embedded in Photoshop. It's going to be embedded in various digital audio workstations. And, and I see a hybrid working method where, you know, you're working with a group of musicians, you're doing a recording and somebody plays their part in somebody else writes their part in and then you go to a track that's prompted and you ask you ask it to respond to what those musicians did to create something new i i, I really think that's where we're headed. yes no but this is just amazing and just trying to even imagine what this is all going to look like five years let alone 10 years from now and what our industry will look like. It really is fascinating. And I wish we had more time. We're almost out of time. Um, but I always like to ask of all my guests, right, this work has to, there has to be some challenging days or when AI is not kind of coming up with what you'd like. And I was just curious, as someone who's an arts leader, what do you do when you encounter those challenging times? And I think in this particular case, challenging as it relates to being a creative person working with technology any things that that you do that might be helpful for those in our audience who encounter the same challenges um sometimes it's important to put the tools away and go for a walk uh, um, or uh, sometimes it's a perceptual thing where i think nothing is happening in the studio it doesn't it, it isn't good and i just put it away and then I'll come back to it in a week to, to actually see if I was correct. And sometimes I'm not. There's a, there can be something good there that I didn't hear because my ears were fatigued or or whatever. So th those are sort of two, uh, uh, two things that I do. I'm also very fortunate to work with an incredible um, 
artist in his own right, um, technical person and programmer, and I have the uh, ability to give him a call when things aren't going well. <laughs> That is absolutely awesome. David Stout, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our world. Thank you so much. Your work is fascinating. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Aaron. Just a heads up, everyone, that my new book, Lessons in Gratitude, a memoir on race, the arts, and mental health, published by the University of Michigan Press, is now available on Amazon and everywhere books are sold. I encourage you to check it out.